Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Trump's new orders target domestic drone industry. Walmart and Wing bring drone deliveries to five major cities. And Volt Aero unveils HPU 210 hybrid electric powertrain. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Trump's new orders target domestic drone industry. President Trump has signed a series of executive orders that claim to strengthen domestic drone manufacturing, enhance public safety, and revive civilian supersonic air travel. The actions reflect a broader federal effort to reduce U.S. reliance on foreign drone technology, particularly from China. One order directs the FAA to allow commercial and public safety operators to fly drones beyond the visual line of sight, a significant change from existing restrictions. It also supports testing of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft for potential roles in cargo delivery, emergency response, and rural access. Another directive promotes exports of American-made drones and prioritizes federal agency purchases from U.S. manufacturers. A major driver of these executive orders was security concerns. Officials cited espionage risks from foreign-built drones and the possibility of drones being used to smuggle drugs or disrupt major public events, including the 2026 World Cup or the 2028 Olympics. The order stated, quote, Building a strong and secure domestic drone sector is vital to reducing reliance on foreign sources, strengthening critical supply chains, and ensuring that the benefits of this technology are delivered to the American people, end quote. A separate order instructed the FAA to develop processes for restricting drone flights near critical infrastructure, federal facilities, and borders. It also called for stronger enforcement of airspace laws and funding for local agencies to obtain drone detection tools. After the break, Skyrise takes another step toward FAA certification. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next Gen Minute. Skyrise takes another step toward FAA certification. Skyrise has been given FAA approval to enter for credit flight testing using their proprietary SkyOS operating system. Their current demonstrator for the Skyrise 1 is a Robinson R66 with Rolls-Royce power. It will be interesting to see their success with it as they continue flight testing. The single-stick control scheme already has appreciators in the industry, too, like the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. They congratulated Skyrise, citing the, quote, milestone accomplishment of a fully automated takeoff, hover, and set down at the swipe of a finger, powered by SkyOS, end quote. Russia says drone-damaged warplanes will be repaired. U.S. intelligence personnel assessed that the Ukrainian drone strike against Russian airfields on June 1st actually hit as many as 20 warplanes, and about 10 were destroyed, or about half the overall number estimated by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Sergei Ryabkov, Deputy Foreign Minister of Russia, said that all the aircraft will be repaired. Ryabkov told the Russian state news agency TAAS, quote, The equipment in question, as was also stated by representatives of the Ministry of Defense, was not destroyed but damaged. It will be restored, end quote. Senate sets a date to confirm Brian Benford as FAA head. The U.S. Senate Commerce Committee will hold a nomination hearing on June 11th to consider Brian Bedford as the next administrator of the FAA. The hearing, scheduled for 10 a.m. Eastern, will be chaired by Senator Ted Cruz. 
Bedford, the current CEO of Republic Airways, was nominated by President Trump earlier this year. He would replace acting FAA head Chris Rochelleau, who stepped in after former Administrator Mike Whitaker resigned on Inauguration Day, just two years into his five-year term. United halts Starlink Wi-Fi access amid radio issues. United Airlines has temporarily shut off its Starlink satellite internet system on a portion of its fleet after pilots reported static interference during radio transmissions. The airline confirmed that nearly two dozen Embraer E-175 regional jets equipped with the system were affected. The carrier cited interference between Starlink antennas and cockpit communication equipment, noting that the problem is fairly common with new in-flight Wi-Fi systems and does not pose a safety risk. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to you the rest of the news. Walmart and Wing bring drone deliveries to five major cities. Partnering with Alphabet-owned Wing, Walmart plans to roll out drone operations to 100 additional stores. The expanded service includes locations in Atlanta, Charlotte, Houston, Tampa, and Orlando. This is not Walmart's first drone rodeo. Wing has been flying deliveries from Walmart stores in Dallas-Fort Worth and Bentonville, Arkansas for nearly two years. In the Dallas region alone, 18 stores currently use drones to deliver around 1,000 orders per day. Items most often requested include eggs, baby wipes, and last-minute must-haves like a single pint of milk or a forgotten ingredient. The drones, operated and maintained by Wing staff, are capable of carrying packages up to 5 pounds. Each machine has a 5-foot wingspan and can lower packages directly into customers' yards via a tether. Wing says the average delivery time is 19 minutes, giving customers in the new service area an expected delivery time of 30 minutes or less, assuming the weather cooperates. In Orlando and other new cities, drone orders will initially be available only through Wing's mobile app. Some areas will offer free delivery, while others may charge up to $20 per order. Members of Walmart's Plus program may get lucky and qualify for free delivery as part of their annual subscription. After these messages, Volt Aero unveils HPU 210 Hybrid Electric Powertrain. Welcome back. Volt Aero unveils HPU 210 Hybrid Electric Powertrain. Volt Aero announced the launch of its HPU 210 aircraft powertrain, making the patented hybrid electric propulsion available to propeller-driven aircraft in the home-built, kit-built, and very light aircraft categories. The company displayed its HPU 210 hybrid power unit for the first time at its exhibit at the France Air Expo in Lyon. The unit combines a high-performance thermal engine with an advanced electric motor to provide push-to-climb functionality with 40% more power, enabling more efficient, safer, and enhanced flight ops. Jean Boti, CEO and Chief Technology Officer for Volt Aero, said, quote, With the HPU 210, a new category of airplanes will benefit from the patented, proven hybrid propulsion tech pioneered by Volt Aero for our Casio family of regional aircraft, which are now advancing into their pre-production phase. We validated our hybrid propulsion architecture on our in-house Casio S flying test bed, which has logged more than 185 flight hours and flown approximately 25,000 kilometers in a full range of operating conditions." End quote. The HPU-210 is equipped with the Kawasaki H2SX thermal engine that provides a maximum power output of 150 kilowatts, along with a 60 kilowatt engine motor. The H2SX is derived from its use on Kawasaki's Ninja H2SX sport motorcycle, and using its high-performance four-cylinder inline engine with fuel injection. It has an estimated TBO of 1,500 hours. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.